Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining me today. So, working more on the wall and the arch in the wall, which I think is a window. That's what I'm going to call it anyway. <laughs> yeah, some bigger blocks today, so should probably go pretty quick. Oh, pardon me, my goodness. Obviously, this is the last session of the month, so I will not be uh, finishing this pass. Yeah, that's not happening because there's like another 4,000 stitches to go for that. But I feel pretty safe to say that next month that will be doable. So... All right, it's a clear but cooler day today. It's still below freezing, but no new snow or ice, so I am not going to complain. Yeah, neck is definitely feeling better, thankfully. I'm starting at zero today and fingers crossed for no technical difficulties this time <laughs> yeah I said that conspired against me next time last time that and my neck pain is just yeah so I try to make my sessions at least an hour long because I know I've had people saying they prefer the longer ones but sometimes that just isn't feasible, so. But I figured I'd rather put out a video, even if it is a little bit shorter, and not put one out at all. looking a little funky there. Not sure what happened. Is it a knot or something? Doesn't feel like it. It just it's not pulled quite tight enough, I guess. There. I guess I just didn't quite snug it up properly. Yeah, while I was forming that stitch. So, as I said, it is below freezing, so you can hear my furnace kicking on. <laughs> of color changing for a bit and then we're gonna get into some bigger blocks although I think this part of the curve of the archway is like kind of got some motifs in it or something let me find my mock-up here yeah there's kind of some decorative work on the outline of this arch here which we're working on so it won't be completely solid blocks. Be broken up a bit by other colors. Okay. keep checking our weather forecast to see if there's snow. So far hasn't been for the next couple weeks, so I am really hoping this will be it, but 
If past years are anything to go by, we will not get that lucky. <laughs> There's always at least one more between now and the end of May. Yeah. So yeah, this side of the archway, it's uh, slopes in the direction I normally stitch. Then when I get to the other side, I will probably follow the curve of the colors again there. So it goes a bit quicker that way. So like I said, yeah, I may just not bother with my diagonal lines at all anymore because I don't really, I don't really follow them that much. I used to follow them more closely, but now I don't. Yeah, my method has slowly changed over time. I used to stitch cross country. Then I switched to parking and I did kind of a hybrid of parking and cross country. And then I slowly changed to not leaving any gaps, but working in a diagonal direction. And then after a while, kind of morphed into this new way don't really stick to the diagonal. I just follow the colors as they move across the piece. I'm calling it my color flow method. <laughs> well, one thing I really like with this method is you're very unlikely to leave any lines because you are not working in lines. Yeah, like I've said, I've never had a problem with lines, but this way could, if you were having problems with lines, this could help potentially avoid it. Yeah, I know people say stitching diagonally prevents lines and it does help, but some people do still end up with lines. Yeah, it sort of all depends on your tension and the way you stitch. Okay. Colors just sort of, oops, flowing back and forth across these. Now that one here up in the corner, I think is a short piece. I think I remember, yes, I remember parking it there because I was about to end it off, but then I realized it was sort of a lone stitch by itself there. It didn't connect with others of this color, so it just made sense to park this there and do that one last stitch with this piece before tying it off. Then I don't have to add another little bit. Hard to believe another month has gone by. It feels like Easter was early this year too. <laughs> So every big holiday, Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, um, I, uh, I make a cheesecake and I make different ones like uh, Thanksgiving is pumpkin cheesecake. Christmas I make eggnog cheesecake. And uh, for Easter this year, I tried mocha cheesecake, which was actually pretty yummy. Yeah, like I said, I don't drink coffee anymore. But uh, so this uses just a little bit of um, express, instant espresso uh, granules or whatever. And uh, yeah, gives it kind of a, a coffee flavor. So that was yummy. I might make that again. The eggnog cheesecake is probably my favorite because I can't drink eggnog. Yeah. It's, uh, it's weird. I don't have... Like, I don't get a really, I get a bit of an upset stomach from it, but it's not stomach trouble it's that I get from drinking milk. It's, um, I get really tired, like just exhausted the next day as if I'm fighting like a major flu or something. Yeah. And, uh, I do the same if I eat pork, so it's like an allergy or something. I think it's the 
not the sugar of the milk. I think it's the protein of it because um, there's a special one that I can buy called A2 milk, which um, instead of the, they said instead of the A1 protein, it's A2 only protein, which can be easier to digest. And I can manage that one without the same symptoms. So that's why I think it's the protein that's the issue and not, not the sugar, which is what most people have when they have trouble with milk is the, yeah, the lactose. And lactose-free products do nothing for me. They don't help at all. So I tried the lactate pills and they didn't do anything either. So yeah, that's why I think that's not the problem. My son had a similar issue um, when he was weaning from the bottle, we couldn't give him cow milk and our doctor suggested goat milk because again, the protein can be easier to digest and yeah, he did great on goat milk. So that's what he drank for years. And then for a while he was able to drink cow milk for a few years, but then he started having problems. So yeah, he can drink the A2 cow milk now. So that's what we get. Yeah, the one thing that kind of sucked with having goat's milk is it does not last very long. Its shelf life was about half of the duration of cow milk. So yeah, they sold it in smaller, like two liter instead of four liter jugs. But um, yeah, that meant you had to go to the store like every, you know, three or four days to get fresh stuff because it just wouldn't last that long. And yeah, I had to take one back once because it was before the best before date, but it like completely separated. Yeah, and so I brought it back to then. She's like, what's the problem? Well, oh, and she sees it. It's like, oh yeah, I can see it. So uh, <laughs> it looks like an oil water mix thing or something. I remember those were really popular when I was a kid. These little um, decorations they used to have, and it usually was like a brick with water in it and it had oil as well. And like you would turn it upside down and like the oil would either trickle down or they had different ones. There was one where it went down in individual drips and like turned a little water wheel, which made it do a bunch of interesting stuff. Yeah, on uh, a bunch of interesting stuff, made other gears turn and made a little sort of show of it because the oil and water don't mix, right? And yeah, and then when it all drained to the bottom, I think it was either drained to the bottom or rose to the top. I can't remember which. I think it was rose to the top because I think the oil floats on top. Yeah, that was it. Then you could turn it over and watch it do the whole thing all over again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, or they had ones I saw recently. Somebody had a, they were advertising the ones with the sand it had like different colors of sand that looked almost marbled and you turn it over and it slowly trickles and makes different patterns. And uh, I just thought, wow, everything old is new again because I remember those were really popular when I was a kid. We used to go to the stores and like flip them all over and just stand there watching them. Yeah. And then, yeah, they stopped selling them for a while and then they sort of, they came back. I guess that's how things always work, right? Yeah, like I said, watch pants they go from the you know we had the huge parachute pants in the 80s to you know then bell bottom you know bell bottoms parachute pants and then skinny jeans and then they're getting bigger again and yeah yeah i never really got into the skinny jean thing they were too tight and i don't like feeling really constricted and i don't know i just they made my legs look like twigs. <laughs> so, yeah, I tried a couple on in the store, but I never bought any. They were not my style. Classic boot cut are, yeah, what I always wear. They have the very slight sort of flare towards the ankle so that there's room for your, your boots to fit comfortably. Yeah, those are my favorite. I don't think I'm ever going to get anything different. That's what I've been wearing for sheesh. Oh boy, like almost 25 years now? Yeah, not quite. It's been, although it's getting there, I guess this year will be 25 years since I graduated high school, so maybe. Holy moly. <laughs> uh, yeah, 
yet because we went in the the great big huge bell bottom like beyond bell bottom pants in the late 90s that like soaked up all the rain you know and you had yeah like dirt patterns rising up around your ankles oh we were yeah the stuff we did for fashion right yeah all right like saying the huge you know slouchy pants guys used to wear and my dad said you know like so when they buy those do they like try them on to make sure they don't fit because <laughs> like that was the style yeah platform shoes came back right they were big in the 70s in the 90s they made a comeback and uh yeah my prom shoes were great big platform high heels four and a half inch heels and the toe was like yeah that big and I still have them. I wore them to prom, but yeah, one of my friends says, you're wearing Spice Girl shoes. I'm like, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, you don't see those as much anymore. But yeah, they were like this velvet pattern. They were like black with like this purple velvet pattern on them. And yeah, I still have them. Mm. Like eventually long enough, they'll come back into style, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like having to learn how to walk all over again, walking in those things. Mm. Oh, yeah, I remember my dad laughing at guys having longer hair because he's like, yeah, we did the exact same thing, you know, when I was a teenager. And our dads hated it too. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, my husband had a full-on mullet in the 80s. Yeah. Before I met him. Yeah. But yeah, it was funny because I do not have very many pictures of me in high school because, uh, yeah, they were not attractive. <laughs> oh, I had a very bad perm. And yeah, he's like, if I met you in high school, I would have wanted to date you. You were cute. I said, yeah, well, you had a mullet, so I probably wouldn't have dated you. I hated bullets, even when they were fashionable, yeah. But I'm like, also, though, in high school, we're five years apart. That would have been creepy, yeah. We would have barely been in high school at the same time at five years apart in age, yeah. For, like, one year. That would have been weird, so... Actually, when we met, he thought I was too young for him because uh, I look younger than I am. And yeah, he thought I was like 15. So yeah. Plus, I did not have my driver's license. So we met at a, a young adults group and um, my parents had to give me rides. So he thought I'm too young to drive. And so yeah. And because yeah, I don't look that old. Like I still get mistaken as my teenage kids older sister sometimes and I mean I had him when I was 25 you know not super duper young so but yeah I went um as a band trip chaperone and people kept going you know where's your adult this is you know when he's in sixth grade and it's like yes I know I don't look it but it's me you know I know half these kids are taller than me but I swear to I swear I am an adult <laughs> at least that's that's what my ID says, right? That's what my paperwork says. Mm. Oh, I'm on to my last big strand of this color. I'll have to get a new new skein out. But yeah, my kid grew another half an inch since the last time we measured him. I just saw him the other day. He was standing next to his dad and I went, I think you grew again because yeah, the height difference looks even less now. My husband is uh, 5'9", and uh, our son is 5'11", 
five seven now. So yeah, he doesn't eat meat, so he has to drink protein drinks. Like he does eat cheese and eggs and stuff, but yeah, he will eat some. But he does, yeah, most of the days he doesn't want to eat it. So, yeah, making sure he get his protein. Yeah, like I said in a previous video, I feel like I'm one of the only moms of a teenage boy who worries her kid doesn't eat enough. Well, the thing is, it's not that he's not hungry. It's just he's always busy, right? He's always wants to get back onto his computer play games or whatever and he just doesn't want to take the time to eat and my husband said he was similar when he was a kid he felt like it was a waste of time and his parents had to like yeah really you know uh, pressure him to make sure he ate enough because he just he wouldn't bother I mean I said yeah but by the time you were a teenager that probably wasn't an issue right he's like no I, I ate plenty then <laughs> And then after that, of course, he he joined the military when he was 19. He's like, yeah, when you're on basic, you, you eat like a horse because you are doing a lot of physical work. Yeah. Well, anybody, you know, gets the whole group in trouble, you'll have to do push-ups. And he said sometimes they made them do push-ups where you actually had to put your ankles on the shoulders of the guy behind you and he had to do the same so you weren't just holding your weight yeah like it was you wanted to be the guy at the very head of the line because yeah <laughs> then you weren't holding other people's weight but yeah he said that was wild oh yeah his, his brother his next oldest brother who's um a year younger than him he said yeah when he came home for basic trade he's like holy cow dude you're so ripped he said like before that, they would um, arm wrestle and they were pretty evenly matched, right? He's like, yeah, after my husband came home from basic training, it was just like no contest, right? Just pinned him within a few seconds. He says, yeah, sometime he'd toy with me too. And I think, oh, I'm almost winning. And, you know, he'd have his hand like an inch away from the tabletop and then boom, it was like, oh, you were just playing with me. Okay. <laughs> um. Yeah, I said it was hard work because he had that and you had the studies too because that's where he got his training to be an electronics engineer. Yeah. And it was really accelerated. He said basically you did what was normally a four-year study program in two years. So, yeah. He said the, uh, the washout level was pretty high. Like, I think he said at least half of the people were gone within the first couple of months, it was, yeah, grueling. Yeah, and of course, never say never, before I met him, I said I, was, I wasn't I was going to date anyone in the military because I didn't want to deal with that stress. And then, yeah, we got together. We've been dating for like a week or something. And I'm like, so what do you do? He's like, I, oh, I'm in the army. I'm like, oh, shoot. You know, like, oh, said, yeah, too late by then. I was already falling for him. So, uh, yeah, in fact, when I was in college, we had to do a presentation in front of the class. And we could do it on any topic we wanted. And um, well, actually, I'm going to do that one too. And so I picked um, what it's like being married to someone in the military. And then I pre uh, prefaced it with saying that I um, uh, never thought I'd be talking on this topic because I was never going to date anyone in the military, but never say never, right? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, it's not like civilian life where sometimes you can move somewhere and not really know your neighbors, even though you live there for years. 
yeah, when you live in military housing, like the instant somebody moves in, everyone comes over and introduces themselves and yeah. Yeah, that little complex where we lived is all gone now. It's all condos now. All those little rancher houses that we lived in, they were built like pre-World War II. So yeah, I'm not surprised they're gone now. <laughs> Yeah, it was quite nice. We got to have our own sort of, instead of having to live in an apartment, you know, with people sharing walls and with you. Yeah, we got to have our own separate building. So there was like zero closet space, but that was kind of, that was okay because I mean, it was like a little three bedroom rancher and there was just the two of us. We didn't have any kids, so yeah. Basically, one of the uh, rooms became the storage slash closet area. Because, yeah, the actual closets were ridiculously small. It was, like, enough room to hang, like, maybe five hangers worth of stuff and, like, no drawers or anything. Yeah, it was... Yeah, it was wild. Well, even this house we're in did not have much closet space. We had a tiny little corner closet, and that was it. And fortunately, the... Master bedroom was fairly large, so my husband actually built a second closet along one wall. So little corner closet is all mine, and then about a third of the big closet along the wall is mine, and he has the other two-thirds of it. It works out well. <laughs> Which was kind of nice, too, because we put those, like, mirrored doors up instead of just regular closet doors, so it does make the room still look bigger than it is, which is nice. But yeah, that was, uh, that was something we noticed when we were buying our house is so many of the houses were so small that even in the master bedroom you have a queen size bed there wasn't any room to put any end tables next to it the or the bed would have to be up against one corner which yeah neither of us wanted because then you have to climb over your partner <laughs> to get in and out of the bed and it can be yeah, disturbing to them so Well, we don't always go to sleep at the same time, too, so you really don't want that. Yeah, well, I remember there was um, a couple who said they don't have designated sides of the bed and basically broke the internet, right? Because people were just like, but how? And I'm like, yeah, that just blew my mind. I said, like, in the dark, how can you find which side of the bed is empty? They said, yeah, whoever goes to bed first just sort of picks a side. I'm like, but, but, like, you have your book or your your phone charger or whatever, you know, your glass of water or whatever on one side of the bed is yours. I mean, at least that's how we do it. Yeah. Because, yeah, if one of us goes to bed earlier, the other one doesn't want to turn on lights and stuff when they're coming in, right? We try to, to, to come in quietly so we don't disturb whoever's already asleep. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, when we were first married, my husband had this bright idea that we should switch sides every six months so the mattress wears more evenly. And I'm like, I don't know. And I tried it for like half an hour. I'm like, nope, sorry, you're on the wrong side. I need my side of the bed back. <laughs> and that was it. And then it was funny because years later, I brought it up. I'm like, so would you want to do that? He's like, no, I don't know what the heck I was thinking. You know, that just does not work. Hmm. Yeah, my sister's like, no, that's what you spin and flip your mattress for, right? Yeah. Yeah, they said the it's spin in the spring and flip in the fall, although ours, we don't flip because it's a pillow top, so obviously there is a right side up for that, yeah. Yeah, it's funny. We didn't really consciously choose either. It was just, I remember I picked 
I said, I'll pick this side because um, on our honeymoon, I said, I'll pick this side because it's closer to the bathroom and I'm the one who gets up more in the night to use the bathroom. And so that just makes it easier. And then that's it. That said it for the rest of our lives now. That's my side of the bed. Yeah. Although actually, I mean, I guess I probably would have picked it in the end anyway because I can't stand when there's air moving across my face. So I can't stand if my husband's facing me and breathing across my face. And I sleep on my left side like 90% of the night. So yeah, it's better that I sleep on that side and then I'm facing out and nobody's breathing on my face. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't sleep with a fan even when I'm when it's hot. It just yeah, feeling the air moving over me keeps me awake. My mom called me Princess in the Pea when I was a kid. It's like, well, I don't want to be that way, but yeah, unfortunately, I am that way. Everything has to be just right. Yeah, there's quite a lot of this darker tan it makes some kind some odder shapes so we're going to end up with stuff branching off in different places and using different threads I think which is again fine because there's so much of it I'm going to use it up anyway with multiple threads so okay so let's do this sitting on oh it's my pliers <laughs> yeah I keep some nearby to tighten the bolts on my on my craft stand sometimes it needs it in fact I had to do it recently yeah so far I haven't had it collapse on me while I'm filming but of course now that I said that maybe I jinxed it <laughs> In fact, I think the halfway point of the arch is right about here. That's going to start curving the other way. But I'm kind of cutting it off right about there, filling all this in, and then I will fill in the other side. I'll be wanting to move the frame over anyway, so. Plus, like I said, after this session, I will be taking this out of the frame to show you guys the whole thing, how it is progressing.
right, so here's the bigger blocks I was talking about earlier. Yeah, so my son's been saving up his money. He wants to buy a, a proper gaming computer. And he's talking about he wants to actually get a steering wheel set up and everything for playing driving games. So, yeah, that's kind of cool. So, yeah, my uh, husband is telling him, yeah, well, you've got to start researching what kind of stuff you need. You know, what kind of graphics cards and, yeah, how much processing speed you need and stuff. Because my husband said, I'm not doing it for you. You know, this is your project, so you need to do it. Yeah. So that's probably what he's going to be doing this summer. And then he's applied for some summer jobs, so we'll see if he gets for some part-time work. Earn a bit more money. Yeah, so I was curious. I said, yeah, if he filed his taxes, he'd get, like, I think he paid 17 bucks in payroll deductions. Uh, but it's, like, 60 bucks to file, I think. So, or no, actually, no, that was for mine. But for his, I think it would be less. But, um, but, uh, yeah, like, then he'd cut. And I think if you only have, like, two bucks difference they don't refund it so it's not really not really worth it at this point yeah almost got mixed up as to what i was doing because i didn't color a tin <laughs> i usually have what i'm currently stitching highlighted and then i hit the check mark once i complete it I do a bit more up here. Yeah, because these are still threaded anyway. Before I go back down and over to the left to uh to fill in some more.
Okay, let's try to decide how far up I want to go with this too. Like I say, I don't like to work across too wide of an area because then I end up with too many um, needles going. It makes things more prone to tangling, which you don't want. So I think these I'm going to set aside soon. That'll set aside. I think, is this one threaded? It's not. Okay, then I'm not going to bother doing that since it's not already threaded. Yeah, just going to sort of work with these ones that are and either end them off or park them out of my currently working area. deal with them later. come up right. Oh yeah, just, yeah, my grid line in the way was hard to see <laughs> whether I pierce the fabric or not. to do that.
Oh, it looks like my food delivery is here. Excellent. in a minute. You need to get it right away. They don't need me to sign and it's designed to be okay for 48 hours, they said, without needing the fridge. They have ice packs in there and stuff, so. Yeah, in fact, uh, when we had to leave unexpectedly because we got the news that my mother-in-law was only had a few days left, and uh, it was too late to cancel our our box of food, so um, we told the people who were getting our mail and stuff while we were gone that they could just have it. <laughs> yeah. And they said, well, we'll pay you for the box. I said, no, no, that'll be, you know, with our thanks for, for watching the house. Yeah. You can just have it as, that'll be, you know, we'll be even then. <laughs> I said, I mean, I would hate for the food to just go to waste, right? So just take it. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to unthread this because it's going to be a while till I work my way out here again. I'm going to go back to this corner. Yeah, start working my way out again. This is another color we're going to have. There's a bit of it branching off in different directions. So we'll have multiple threads. So actually, I kind of see a way that I'm going to just use one for this area for now. So I'm going to do that.
fix it this way for the moment. I don't have to add another thread. So I was able to do that with one thread and not close anything in.
I'm going to take a break here. I've done quite a bit. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's where I'm going to quit for now. I need to get up and move around, get my blood moving. But uh, anyway, uh, thank you for joining me today and hope to see you here next time. Right, thanks, everyone.